Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. Today was Apple's WWDC 2010 keynote, and a lot of stuff that we kind of expected happened, happened. The first thing I want to mention is there's going to be an iBooks update for iPad users. PDF support and bookmarks are coming later in June. Now, remember that iBooks is coming in iPhone OS 4.0, so I suppose that this update will be pertinent to iPhone users as well. Speaking of iPhone OS 4.0, it has been, now been renamed iOS 4. Since it's being used, you know, for iPod Touches, for iPads, the idea of having a cell phone, uh, you know, iPhone OS is kind of silly at this point. So iOS 4 is the new software. We already know most of it, and I've walked you through the software in the past. The Gold Master is going live today, uh, but Bing is being officially integrated as a search option. The Netflix app for iPhone is coming soon with 3G support for streaming. And Farmville and Guitar Hero were also announced for the iPhone. But the biggest thing about WWDC 2010, which we unfortunately already knew a lot about because of Gizmodo and their leaks, was iPhone 4. That's the official name of it. It's the new saw. It's the new hardware from Apple. It's 25% thinner than previously, 9.3 millimeters thick by 115 millimeters high by 58.6 millimeters wide. So it's really small. It's 137 grams or 4.8 ounces. So it's actually smaller than the 3GS, and it has some additional features. First of all, it comes black or white. Not just the back though, but also the front. So parts similar to this there is going to be a white option for that. It's stainless steel, and it's lost a lot of the curvature of it, so it's more industrial. And what I really like about it is the stainless steel band that goes around the device is actually an antenna. So this is in two good improvements here. Stainless steel, so we don't have to worry about casing it, we don't have to worry about scratching it, etc., etc. And we also get better reception because the band that wraps around it actually connects and is used as an antenna. So a great design choice by Apple. Uh, in terms of the camera, it really makes the 3GS look like a little stepping stone stepbrother when you consider uh, that they have again updated the camera to 5 megapixels with backside illuminated sensor, 5 times digital zoom, tap to focus, and an LED flash. And in terms of video, that can record 720p content at 30 frames per second. Moving along with video, the screen is amazing. It's 960 by 640 resolution. That's 326 pixels per inch PPI. That's four times greater than previous iPhone screens, and that's just not heard of on the market. 326 PPI pixels per inch is simply stunning. In fact, apparently that's greater than the pixels per inch uh, correlation to your eye, so they call this the retina display because it's better than your eyesight. It has an IPS screen, which Apple says is better than OLED, and has an 800 to 1 contrast ratio. But it's also more powerful. This is an A4 processor, which is, if it's the same as what's in the iPad, that's a 1 gigahertz chip. It has two mics for active noise canceling, which is nice. And with all these improvements, they've slightly improved battery life with 7 hours of talk time for 3G, 6 hours of 3G browsing, 10 hours of Wi-Fi browsing, 10 hours of video watching, 40 hours of music, and 300 hours of standby time. In terms of connectivity, we're getting 802.11n in addition to the Bluetooth and the 802.11g and B Wi-Fi that we've had in the past. And they're also changing the regular SIM slot to a micro SIM slot, which I don't really see the use for, um, but they're doing that. What's also nice about video recording, if we go back to that for a second, they're also introducing an app, iMovie for iPhone, which is a sophisticated video editing mobile solution for your iPhone, which can export in 720p just like the video that you've recorded. It's going to run you $4.99, but you have a lot of different choices. You can combine clips, add music, photos, titles, transitions, and even add basic effects. Uh, there's even a Ken Burns option if you want to do that. And if you don't want to pay any money, you still have the features of the iPhone 3GS where you could just trim the clips, so you don't have to pay extra for that. What's also nice is they're implementing a front-facing camera, which I think is probably about the same as the previous sensor that was on the iPhone 3GS. It has uh, VGA quality for photos and videos, 30 frames per second in that front-facing camera. And if I didn't mention it already, video chat is coming to iPhone 4. So you can do iPhone 4 to iPhone 4 video chat. It's Wi-Fi only because, you know, they made a joke about it that, you know, the mobile carriers, the telecoms, i.e. AT&T, can't handle that. But it's coming soon, which, you know, took a year for tethering to actually become a reality. But if you want to say hello, you can... Just use the front-facing camera, and then when you're done, you can switch it to this mode and show, uh, you know, the people that you're talking to what what's what you want. So that's really cool. And to make the device even more precise, they've added a lot of new sensors, including a three-axis gyroscope. 
So now your movements, your games are more accurate, more precise, and the iPhone experience is just that much better. Uh, they also announced cases, but they're called bumpers, and they just go around the border of the phone. It's going to cost $29 and comes in white, pink, orange, green, blue, and black. And the idea is Apple's using it to make your device more customizable so you can clearly, you know, be different than everybody else. But that's the same thing we've had with cases in the past. Uh, in terms of availability, this is launching June 24th in the United States and four other countries. It's going to be $199 for a 16 gigabyte model, $299 for a 32 gigabyte model. We're not seeing that bump in storage like we've previously seen. I would have liked to see a 64 gigabyte option, but not bad. And AT&T is actually being nice for once, and they're actually giving users six extra months of upgrade time. What does that mean? That means if you're upgrade eligible in December of 2010, now you're upgrade eligible at launch. So that's really a convenient feature to have. The iPhone 3GS is dropping to only an 8GB model, and that's going to be running for $99, similar to the way they did it in the past. So, what do you think about iPhone 4? Do you think the Retina display is enough to push it over the top? Do you think mobile video chat will be adopted by the masses? And do you think that video editing will actually take off on a mobile platform? I'd love to hear your comments in the space below. Again, I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.